Thanks very much for, for being here. <clears throat> okay. yeah. That's all. Um, Richard reached out to me uh, shortly after the, the, the FinTech conference and asked me to speak on, on cybersecurity. I'm not a true cybersecurity expert. Uh, what I know is, 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 you know, is well learned, but, but uh, I know there's a lot of people in here that are much more uh, cybersecurity savvy than me here. Um, but anyway, I, I'm going to set the stage. And then we have people from uh, PLDT and from, uh, from uh, the Bureau of Investigations who are going to take over and really expand on this subject, yeah? Red Morph was started uh, by Abe Edlabacher. Uh, and uh, we're focused on privacy, on the privacy aspect of cybersecurity. What happened was a, a few years ago, his kids came to him and said, uh, Dad, we want to have a Facebook account. And Abe, being a technologist, the first thing he did is he said, well, let's see what's going on in the back, yeah? Uh, let's pull back the covers, look, in the looking uh, look through the looking glass and see what's happening back there. And what he discovered was enough to get him to start Red Morph, yeah? In preparation for this presentation today, I, uh, I came across some fantastic terms and terminology, uh, words that we all probably know um, but the key thing is how they're used, the context of how they're used, which was different, yeah? Uh, basically, a lot of these terminologies are built around the idea that we are products. Uh, so they packetize us and our actions online. Some for good, some for bad, yeah? Who here is familiar with Sesame Credit? Sesame Credit, anyone? No? You have a pad of paper in front of you. Write it down. Sesame Credit. Not Sesame Street, Sesame Credit. Write it down and when you get to your office, go to YouTube and look it up. Seven minute video which is fascinating. It talks about how China is weaponizing social media, fintech, universities, government services in order to socially engineer the right actions, the right behavior in people, yeah? We're going to talk about social engineering a lot today, yeah? I found this to be a, a fantastic uh, uh, re report that I found online. It's uh, cybersecurity and the age of pirateering, yeah? It basically talks about the laws of the sea between 1300 and the mid 18th, uh, 18th century, and cybersecurity today. And it contrasts the players, uh, you know, that, that were available. Yeah? So if you look at, for instance, the state actors, you had the Navy, versus today you have intelligence agencies, cyber armies, offensive security teams. Uh, the mercantile companies, some of the biggest companies in the world at the time, like the British um, East India Company or the Dutch East India Company, versus telecommunication service providers, social media platforms, data brokers, ad brokers, ad networks. Uh, you have the privateers, basically pirates that were sailing under somebody's flag. And um, contrasted with patriotic hackers or, or techno, uh, techno mercenaries. And finally, pirates uh, versus organized criminals, digital jihadists and the like, yeah? Uh, George Orwell authored uh, 1984 in 1948 and in it they talk about a, a, a group of people that are living in, in uh, Oceania under constant war, uh, omnipresent government surveillance, facing manipulation or again social engineering and you're going to find it very disturbing how similar that book is to what I told you to write down earlier on, Sesame Credit. Fascinating. Surveillance. We're going to talk about a surveillance as well, yeah? So according to Wikipedia, surveillance is the monitoring of behavior, activities, uh, or other uh, changing information for the purpose of influencing, managing, and or directing people. Again, social engineering, yeah? It's used by governments, state actors, to protect 
people and property. It's used by businesses, semi-state entities, uh, to induce customer loyalty and wallet share. And finally, it's used by criminal organization, the pirates, yeah, to plan and commit crimes. Another word that comes up over and over again is metadata. And metadata really is nothing more than data about data. But that, those little pieces of data, uh, when, when they're put together, can create context, yeah? And the thing is that about 20 years ago, the price of storing data collapsed right after the dot-com bubble. And so companies or governments could store a huge amount of data for a lot less money. But not only that, now the cost of compute has come down. And of course, there's been advances in things like big data, analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning. And so the cost to process all that data has come down. And the speed at which all that data can be processed is, has come down as well. So it's created basically a situation where you have this dragnet surveillance going on, which means that governments collect data about everything that they can. They collect telecom data, they collect medical data, they collect payments data, they collect e-commerce data, you name it. If it can be digitized, they want to collect it yeah? and store it and process it. And then you have semi-state actors, right? So the mercantile companies were massive organizations, often Often they were bigger than the navies of their own countries. Yeah, so the British East India's uh, British East India Company's navy was much stronger than the British navy of the time. But provided they paid their token payments to the king and came when the king called, they were pretty much allowed to go out and do business as they wanted. So they enslaved people. They started wars. They addicted people to opium. Pretty much they could do whatever they want. Today we have different types of mercantile companies. Uh, some of the platform companies that you can think of. So in the West we have Fang, right? Facebook, Amazon, uh, Netflix, Google, some would say Apple. Uh, in China you have uh, Baidu, Alibaba, does anybody get the word Alibaba and uh, Sesame, Alibaba, yeah, yeah, Alibaba, in the, yeah, same company. Um, you, <laughs> uh, uh, Taibao, yeah, Ten, Tencent, sorry, Tencent, and, and Xiaomi, yeah. But of course, you've also got all the data brokers who are constantly collecting data on you, packetizing that and selling that on to, to different organizations, yeah. Surveillance capitalism. That's the, 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 the main business model of all of these companies. Basically, surveillance capitalism is a new genus uh, of capitalism which uh, monetizes data acquired through surveillance. You also have other semi-state actors. So, techno-mercenaries uh, and patriotic hackers. Techno-mercenaries are, are an interesting bunch. They actually swing back and forth between illegal activities and working for the state. Basically, they go to anybody that pays them the money. The one thing they won't do is they won't attack anything that's of relevance to the country that provides them sanctuary. Yeah? So they're pretty smart in that regard. Yeah? And patriotic hackers, I, th I think my favorite story on patriotic hackers is probably, is probably the uh, North Korean uh, attack of Sony Pictures a few years ago. So. They were about to release a movie about killing, a comedy at that, killing their fearless leader, which they couldn't have, just couldn't have it, yeah? So the state said, yeah, go ahead, do it. And they attacked Sony Pictures. Of course, they also managed to steal a huge amount of data, financial data in that, so they got rich from doing it, yeah? But again, the primary objective was to be patriotic. There are other non-state actors as well. Um, Sorry, there are non-state actors, the, the pirates of the world, the digital jihadists and organized criminals. Today, more people become, uh, become uh, terrorists online uh, than they ever did uh, in any other way. Yeah? I mean, it's their favorite tool of converting people or, or, or turning them into, uh, into weaponized individuals, yeah? Organized criminals, you know, it's, it's fabulous. This is, this is just a great 
quote. It's the only one, well, there's one of two I'm going to read. Who here knows a company named Infraud? Anybody heard of Infraud? No. Infraud uh, was about 11,000 uh, people, criminals, working together uh, to create uh, opportunity for themselves. Yeah? They were all over the world. They had a structure, an organizational structure, rules, and they even had that, the premier destination for Cardinal. They had their own logo, the slogan. They had enough balls to go out on the line and say, we are the premier destination for creating crime. I think it's just fantastic. You couldn't write this stuff, yeah? What's amazing is that the cost of cybercrime is going down. Not the cost to all of us, right? The cost to them. Because they're taking advantage of exactly the same resources as all of us. They've gone to the cloud. Yeah? So they're using things like um, DDoS as a service. You can dial it up and ask for it. You have a competitor you don't particularly like in a particular day of the year that's really important to them. Get yourself a DDoS attack against them. Yeah? Bulletproof hosting. Guaranteed not to go down. Buy it for a month, buy it for an hour, buy it for a day, whatever you need. CAS. Anybody know what CAS is? No? Crimeware as a service. There's an app for that, guys. Everything. The primary objective of these guys is data exfiltration, yeah? Which basically means sucking in data, sorting it out, putting it together, packetizing it, and selling it on so it can be exploited. And of course, financial data is priority number one, no doubt about it. If you're a company and you collect or process financial data, so if you're a bank, if you're an insurance company, my favorite, airlines, they get everything. They get it all. Passport numbers, full names, addresses, phone numbers, when you're going to be on an airplane so they know when to rip you off. Yeah? You're in the air for seven hours. Perfect time to go and empty your bank account. You'll never know what's happening. Yeah? Anybody that's collecting data is a target. Even brick and mortar companies. Okay, this is the other one I'm going to bring out. Psychological projection. It's a theory in psychology in which humans defend themselves, attributing blame to others. Blame game, pointing fingers. This is why it's important to all of you. Yeah? You see, customers are the main reason that they get hit by cyber activity. They do stupid things. They don't know what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. And they click on sites they shouldn't. They download apps they shouldn't. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because as far as most customers concerned, it's your fault. You built the app. It's your website. It's your fault. And if you don't fix things in my, you know, to, to suit me, well, I'm going to leave. And I'm going to tell everybody on social media that it's your fault. And most people are going to side with the victim, not with you. So you'll lose your customers. Who remembers the movie Catch Me If You Can? Fantastic movie, right? Uh, real guy. He was a con man, forger, imposter, uh, and finally an FBI agent. His son is now an FBI agent too. But, you know, he talks about social engineering again, and, and, and so does McAfee, and so, do, so does everybody. It really is the key uh, to, to being hit up online. Yeah? Everybody has, has biases, human biases. They make you, they, they identify things that, that attract you. They can, they can see what, what's going to make, make, make you pull your lever, or they can pull your levers. They can make you push the button. They, they, they really understand all con men, whether online or, 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 or in real life. They, they understand people much better than most people, other people do. And they use social engineering techniques to basically get you to act in a way that compromises you. Yeah? So reducing your digital footprint is probably one of the best things you can do uh, for your cyber defense as an individual. Yeah? Michael Douglas knows something about control, huh? Control is what gives you privacy. And that's what Red Morph is about again. Yeah? So what are we doing? So basically, Red Morph's 
vision is to help people uh, have the same level of security and privacy in their digital lives as they do have you know in their in their offline lives yeah we started in 2014 and our our the way we're doing things is we're basically turning things around yeah right now we're in the spotlight every one of us we're being surveilled all the time the device that we use is spying on us the operating system that's on that device is spying on us our network operators ISPs mobile mobile network operators they watch what we do they track it every app on your phone every website you visit they all gather data about you in big data and analytics they packetize that and they sell it on to ad brokers cyber criminals all the time cyber criminals are trying to get to you yeah we're trying to reverse the spotlight that's the objective here yeah we're putting the spotlight on the ecosystem we're building the largest database of tracker definitions in the world we're identifying who they are what they're trying to do how they're coming to you and we're trying to stop them yeah we're basically trying to stop dragnet digital surveillance now our headquarters is in the US and we're working with a couple of companies there but um, our development center is in, in India and we have more going on there so we're working with ICICI Bank ICICI Bank is the biggest private bank in India I think it's about 400 million accounts um, we're working with them to prevent mobile data exfiltration yeah we're working with a ride-sharing app in India who suspect that the other ride-sharing app is possibly spying on them we won't talk about which one's which we're working with Amazon and Flipkart as our main distribution partners uh, we're working with a large mobile wallet company uh, to secure their digital wallet and we're working with defense departments around the world uh, who are very concerned about basically geo uh, geo targeting and uh, metadata exploits yeah and now we're here in the Philippines we're starting up in Southeast Asia and we're looking for that same ecosystem here in the Philippines and that's why I'm here today yeah you see to to really understand the market every single market is different they have different bad guys and they work slightly differently and so we're a new company we're in our infancy and we need to find partners here in the Philippines that want to work with us to solve their customers problems to help protect their customers yeah so I'm hoping that some of you will come to me today pass me your business card and we can set an appointment to meet next week maybe yourself your cybersecurity team your business team and we can talk about how we can work together to solve this problem that's not accurate today <laughs> i thank you all very much for your time